Throughout the 19th century, New Orleans had one of the largest slave markets in the USA. Thriving business to some, but to African Americans of the time, New Orleans meant only one thing, their doom. Slaves weren't considered people, but rather possessions to be bought and sold. Slaves were dehumanized, humiliated, and punished. They were forced to exercise and dance around for possible buyers to prove that they were capable of harsh work. Once sold, they lived in awful conditions, crammed together and starving. The average master could have as many as 50 slaves. Slaves made up 33% of the South population, yet they had no rights. But until such a time as they were sold, the conditions as the slave auction were not much better. They were imprisoned until it was time to be inspected like cattle. So this is a perfect illustration of Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, verse 48, where it says, Ye shall have yokes of iron upon thy necks. This particular yoke of iron, as you can see, it had nails on the side of it. So if we try to break free, we would prick our hands. All right, so Esau had numerous devices around at that time. Okay, not just the ones that you see on TV, but things like this, which we get All right, Malachi chapter 4 and verse 5. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. So most I told us in the last days that he was going to send back the prophets on the earth to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the children back to the fathers. We are the Israelites at IUIC, and we're here to bring our people back to God's commandments. In the last days, we're sent back by the Most High God to set it right, lest he smite this earth with a curse and kill us all. So our job is to teach our people who they are, that they're the Israelites, the so-called Negroes, Hispanic, Native American Indians, and return the children back to the laws of God. This is Deuteronomy 28, 68, all right? This was uh, Moses' entire people who came up out of Egypt. 
it is this, and the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Now the word Egypt is synonymous with slavery. Right, that's probably something that they never told me. You know, we sing songs today of Egypt, but Egypt is bondage. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. How did we come over here to Louisiana? On cargo slave ships. It took us off those ships and brought us here to this wicked plantation that were made to serve our bondage. By the way whereof I spake unto thee. So the way Moses told us it was going to happen, it happened. We had yokes of iron on our necks, right? Our culture was taken away and we came here on ships. Thou shalt see it no more again. So we're not going to see our homeland Israel ever again. Babylon the Great is not our home, but Israel is our home. Thou shalt see it no more again, and there ye shall be sold unto your enemies. You see Master Johnson out here? He's our enemy. I'm sure you know that. He whips you, he makes you pick cotton, pick sugar cane, and you're only six years old, right? Five years old. You're a young man, but they don't care about your age. Why? Because we're serving slavery under them. And there you shall be sold unto your enemies, for bondmen and bondwomen, and no man shall buy you. So we were sold to this man here. We were sold to all the masters, the slave masters that you see in Louisiana, Arkansas, Mississippi. We were sold, sold, sold to them. Why? Because we broke God's commandments. And no man shall buy us. So no man can free us from this condition that we're in. You heard about Charles Islandi on the other plantation. What happened to him? He got put to death. So did Nat Turner. The only person that can save us from this condition is Jesus the Christ. So we gotta turn back to him. Turn back to our Lord. This is your book. Southern trees Bearing strange fruit Blood on the leaves And blood at the root Black bodies swinging summer breeze strange food hanging from the poplar tree all right well we, we're standing there right now is uh, walls and walls of names that were given to the slaves before they were even bought on the ship they had their name changed baptized and had their name changed which goes right back to the scriptures and it said that we would leave by means Isaiah 65 look at Isaiah chapter 65 verse 15 and ye shall leave your name for a curse or what for a curse unto my chosen so every one of our names was taken from us it's the first sign of taking someone's heritage away from them taking away their name we had the name Israel taken away from us we only got a first name the last name that we got was what we were sold to so remember our names are important. Who we are is important. Us coming back to our true heritage is important. Shalom. Swing low, sweet chariot, coming for to carry me.
the Whitney Plantation. And as you can see here on the wall, this describes one of our sisters, one of our Israelite sisters. Her name was Pauline. She was born in 1809. And this is her exact wording. My mom had 15 children, and none of them had the same pa. Every time she was sold, she would get another man. My ma had one boy by her moss that was my, by, excuse me, was my missus' brother's child. You see, every time she was sold, she had to take another man. Her had 15 children after she was sold the last time. Give me Joel 3. It's the book of Joel, chapter 3 and verse 3. So the Holy Bible prophesied that this was happening. This history bears record that this would happen to our people. This is a reality that our people went through, Ray. And they have cast lots for my people. They have cast lots. The people that own the Whitney Plantation, they cast the lots. Read on. And have given a boy for a harlot. And they sold our boys for breeders. That's what the tour guide pointed out before. They bred out with our sisters like cattle, like animals. Read. And sold a girl for wine. And that's exactly what happened. They sold our sisters. It says here, the last time. So she was sold more than one time. And that's why you people got to, you Israelites better wake up in these last days. Come on. That they might drink. And that's what they did. They party. They it made mockery of our sisters. They watched them when the, the studs, which were our brothers, lay down with the sisters. They watched them and they would sit with drinks and watch it happen. Okay? The Bible is a real book. You so-called blacks need to wake up to this truth. Keep God's commandments. This is our history. The Whitney Plantation. IUIC doing big things. Shalom. So there's a saying in Babylon the Great America that art imitates life and life imitates art. Well, in the book of life, the angels are this are there's a depiction of the angels as being black. In the book of Ezekiel, the first chapter, the 13th verse, it says the likeness of the living creatures were like polished brass. What do we have here? Polished brass. Black angels. Alright? So it's not a myth. Alright, this is truth. All the angels were black.
So these heads that you see behind here are the heads of the men that participated in the revolt of 1811. All right, the main man that spearheaded the revolt was this man down here by the name of Charles Dislandis. Okay, so they were tried and prosecuted by the same people that was oppressing them. All right, and as an example, they were beheaded and their heads were hung on stakes to what? Incite fear in the other slaves that might rebel. Okay. And if you look behind us, if, if uh, we were on the tour today and part of the tour that left this part off and we requested to come see this because in order to connect ourselves as so-called blacks to the Bible, we must visit the ugly history that our forefathers were put through. And as you can see, if you pan the camera around, this is what they did to our people, okay? They were just trying to fight against oppression. They were fighting for their freedom. And the judgment that they got, not from a court of their peers, from the court of their slave masters, they were put to death. Their heads were put on a pole. Why? Because as the other slaves, our forefathers would see, they would come in fear. It's no different than the Willie Lynch letters when they took the strongest of our people and broke them down in front of our women and our children. Okay? These, these were not weak men. These were heroes. These were warriors, and they fought to the death. All right? And they had to be memorized, memorialized. These brothers were powerful men. They, they decided to take a stand, and they rose up against their slave masters. Okay, so IUIC will teach you, brothers and sisters, keep the commandments of God, and when we keep the right mind and we get our spirits right, the Lord is going to come back and destroy our enemies before us. Hey, one more thing, brother. Come over here. Come, come, come. Come, come on. I want you to zoom in on this brother right here, all right, because in this particular slave revolt of 1811, a lot of the men marched in formation and so forth, all right? Why? Because they had that military mind state that they brought over from the west coast of Africa. The reason I want you to zoom in on this particular brother, his name was Kamina. He was one of the brothers set forth as a leader in the slave revolt by Charles Islandias. This brother was from Ghana. He was an Ashanti. All right, and he, um, the Ashantis have a habit of, a tradition, I should say, not a habit, a tradition of naming their sons after the days of the week that they were born, okay? So this is more proof that the Ashantis are Israelites. That's for you retarded Israelites out there that say there are no Israelites in Africa. Get your minds right, all right? Hello, this is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.